morning, everyone. I'd like to Wester, uh, welcome Pastor Elaine Dent again. Uh, she, she'll be with us uh, one more time, I think, before Pastor Joel starts. Not next week, but the week after. Uh, we don't have an organist today, so we'll be letting the organ do the prelude and the postlude by itself, and then Lynn will be on the uh, piano for the rest of the music. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, also, good news, we've arranged with uh, Mitchell Sensenig, who's the organist at Our Savior Lutheran Church, to also be our organist here. So when Pastor Joel comes here, Mitchell will come here. So we'll have a, another full-time organist. Uh, the potluck luncheon we had uh, last week uh, to introduce Pastor Joel to a lot of you and for and some of the rest of the members of Our Savior, we had a good turnout, and I think all had a a good lively conversation with the group i saw a lot of smiles and it was a really a great visit also some interesting food too uh we had more than enough food uh so just a reminder that uh, pastor joel will start providing ministerial services on march the 21st so his first sunday with us will be uh march the uh, 26th and because the service will be at 11 o'clock, Sunday school will start at that point on March 26 at 9.30. Uh, and uh, are there any questions from anybody or any announcements? Okay, thank you.
All right, good morning. Is that better? <laughs> so again, welcome on this second Sunday in Lent. Um, this is one of my favorite years of um, year, we're in year, what, year A, right? For the season of Lent is my favorite because we hear the Gospel of John. And I've spent a lot of time walking with the Gospel of John and learning it. So I'm excited to be here preaching it today. So let us begin with a confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in the name of in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And peace have us to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above. For Mm -hmm. 
that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your son jesus christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen you may be seated The first lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis 12th chapter, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abraham, Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in all your families on the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Word of God, word of life. Okay. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? Right. 
The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time and forth forevermore. The second lesson comes from the book of Romans, all over the place. Chapter 4, 1 through 5, 13 through 17. Okay. This is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham? our ancestor according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due, but to one who works without, but to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the inheritance of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jewish people. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit nicodemus said to him how can these things be jesus answered him are you a teacher of israel and you do not understand these things? 
Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not believe our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world in order to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Does it make a difference whether you were born, say, in Virginia or in New York? Does your place of birth affect your personality? Does it tell others something important about you? Most of us would say, yeah, probably. We often use a person's place of birth as a handy label to describe what, how one thinks or how one speaks or even how one votes. There's a difference between being a native New Yorker or a native Virginian, right? Well, there's a flaw in that way of thinking because my birth certificate says that I was born in Freeport, New York on Long Island. I was raised in Virginia, as were my mother and father. And Long Island was only a short in interlude where my dad got a job, one of his first jobs in the big city. By the time I was 18 months old, my parents moved back to Virginia, this time to Blacksburg, and there I was raised for the rest of my childhood. I love mountains. Long Island doesn't have mountains. And I can turn on my hokey style drawl whenever I'm back there. Virginia is my home place and it has had an effect on me. Nothing against New York. I'm just not from there in spite of my birth certificate. So Jesus takes this line of reasoning even further with Nicodemus. He too was not born in his hometown of Nazareth. He didn't talk about his birthplace, Bethlehem either but he did often talk about something more imaginative as birthplaces go. He knew an actively living relationship with God was more important than one's physical birth. He called it being born from above or being born anew or being born again. They are all the same word, whether it's Hebrew or Greek. He called it being born of water and spirit. What Jesus says about being born from above, above might confuse those of us who put great stock in where we were born or where we were raised. Nicodemus was confused. He had come to talk with Jesus privately, either because he was suspicious as a Pharisee or he was curious, we don't know, 
We do know that Nicodemus was an important teacher of the Pharisee group, and they knew each other's ancestors and where they were raised. They taught people about how to keep the religious laws, and many Pharisees were unsure about this Jesus teacher. So in that night, sort of secretly, Nicodemus came alone to check Jesus out for himself and begins by remarking that Jesus seems to come from God. Ah, now that is Jesus' home place, his relationship with God. And that's where Jesus' spiritual heart is. That's his passion in life. And so now Jesus is off and running in this conversation. He flips the interview around and he tells Nicodemus where he, Nicodemus, could find his heart's birthplace, his home place. Jesus says, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, from anew, born again. Nicodemus, would you like to be born, not from Jerusalem or Nazareth or from this tribe or that? How about being born from above? Most of us have heard Jesus's words being translated born again with a particular connotation and a particular way to do it. But because it has this flexible meaning, we can think about it in a little different way. Knowing Nicodemus already thinks that Jesus comes from God, he said it, Jesus then invites Nicodemus, as old as he is and as influential, to be born entirely new. Jesus calls it being born of the Spirit. What does this birth look like? How does it happen? Here is how Jesus describes, tries to describe it to the confused Nicodemus who in this conversation is literally and figurative, figuratively in the dark and is stuck on that literal meaning of being born again. And so Jesus says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Out of all the verses that I have learned and relearned by heart in the Gospel of John, this is the verse that keeps intriguing in me. I think about it when I go outside, when I feel the wind pushing me forward or slowing me down. I think about it when a breeze dries the sweat off my rolling face when I tackle a steep mountain or when I'm on my knees pulling weeds. I think about it, think about the spirit when the wind sings musically through pine trees or blows the red and yellow leaves off the trees in the autumn. I can't see the wind. You can't see the wind. We have no way of controlling where it is going to go or when it starts or when it stops. Sometimes all we can do, we, all we can do is join the wind's energy with our sails and our kites and our wind turbines and sometimes that wind is very is hardly perceptible at all. We cannot control it. Living born from above in a relationship with God, Jesus says, is like a relationship with the wind. 
And no, we don't know where the Holy Spirit will come from and where it will go. We can't predict what the church will be like 10 or 15 years from now. We can join, however, with the energy of Christ's Spirit and participate with the Spirit in ministry to the world. As for a spiritual birth certificate, well, most of us Lutherans point to our baptism and the water as our, and the Spirit as our place of birth. But we know that even this act is a sign and can never capture the whole story of what the Spirit wants to do with us now. I have come to the conclusion that I have been born from above, born anew, many times, over and over and over again. Being born into the life of Jesus is all about letting our identities be shaped and reshaped by this marvelous wind, this breath of the living God now. And I hope you have been born again and again and again from above. But there's one more thing. It's true that when we are born from above, that our new identity with God's spirit takes priority over our earthly identities, like birthplace or family or where we live. My name as a follower of Jesus takes precedence over my earth's names, Elaine, Miller, Dent. That doesn't mean they aren't important. When we are born from above, the fresh air of the spirit blows into those relationships as Elaine and Miller and Dent. In fact, I'm counting on God's energy of God's spirit to be constantly blowing and renewing and healing and deepening my relationships. They need the spirit's energy and renewal too, don't they? They teach us, in fact, something of the ever-living grace of God, the God who claims us in relationship again and again and who breathes new grace and forgiveness and life in us all the time. So you see, Nicodemus asked a very profound question, how to be born anew from above again after having grown old. It's not a ridiculous question at all, but the answer is so big. The answer is so expansive. In fact, the answer is a lifetime and more of living in relationship with God's healing and renewing spirit. So maybe it's a good time this Lent for us to allow the spirit to renew our identity, remind us of whose we are tell us of our home place in god we can begin by praying that the spirit of jesus would come into some of those painful areas of our lives that are in need of some <laughs> renewing for god so loved our world of flesh and blood and messy relationships and misdirected egos. God so loved us in our mess that God has given us the spirit to blow into those messes of our lives and renew us. I imagine 
that Nicodemus walked away puzzled that day. But months later, one day, when the other disciples had run away at the crucifixion of Jesus, Nicodemus, the Pharisee, with another brave soul, Joseph of Arimathea, retrieved Jesus's body, wrapped it in linens and spices, and took it to a tomb. That brave act had to be the wind of the Spirit in his heart, because it probably cost him his job as a Pharisee. Nicodemus was trusting the Spirit as his home place. He had discovered what Jesus had been telling him. Yes, it does make a difference where we are born. May we, like Nicodemus, find ourselves born anew more and more every day. May we, too, trust this powerful, laboring Spirit of God as our home place. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. O oh God, you so love your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless lay theologians, seminary and college professors, and all who are called to the ministry of teaching, that they form and inspire us for the work of the gospel. Merciful God, O oh God, you so love your creation. Breathe new life into our planetary home. Guide the work of researchers, scientists, and activists who love your earth and who inspire us to care for the natural world. Merciful God. Oh God, you so love the world. Uphold leaders who resist tyranny and oppression. Strengthen organizations that promote peace and harmony. Direct their work to alleviate human suffering and to address its root causes. Merciful God. Oh God, you so love your people. Draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, or addiction, and accompany them in healing and recovery. Hear the cries of those who look to you in their distress. Merciful God. Oh God, you so love your saints. As our ancestors in the faith have been blessing to, a blessing to us, so inspire us by their example of holy living to be a blessing to those who come after us. Merciful God. At this time, we will uh, offer any prayers coming from congregation. Butchrow. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Brandy, Brandy okay. Jamie. Jamie, Brandy and Jamie. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace in the spirit. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance again, the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Please stand as you are able.
Embodied God, at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts, open to your promise. Empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We know.
always way to always come up here and stand and give them a call.